Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I will be making the double chili cheeseburger from Tommy's original world famous hamburgers out of Southern California. Let's get going. All right, now Tommy's is one of those iconic Southern California burger joints. It's a joint. Born in Los Angeles, 1946. There's a few more locations throughout Southern California, all family owned. The only thing that's really changed since 1946 is the prices. Very simple, very straightforward menu. And the most popular thing about this restaurant is the chili that they put on their hamburgers. You can have it put on the fries. And that's the first thing we're going to try to recreate is the chili. Now there is one of those kind of copycat recipes floating around the web and it's on several sites, the same recipe. I'm going to use that basic recipe and I'm making some changes. The changes I'm making are based on the comments that I read of people that have done this recreation. And I just had this hamburger not two days ago. So I think I may kind of dial it in a little bit better than this recipe that's floating around. I hope, we'll see. Anyway, first thing we're gonna do is make that chili, get back to the stove here. All right, I have the skillet preheated. I'm going to add one pound of ground beef. This is 80-20. I wanna get this all broken up and cooked. Goal is to get a lot of this grease drained off. We're going to use this to make a roux. As you can see, it's cooking along fine. And again, I wanna break it up into basically crumbs. Now, one of the comments about this knockoff recipe is it doesn't really have that dark brown color that Tommy's chili actually has. So this is something that I plan on correcting. Now, two tablespoons of very finely, finely minced carrots are part of this recipe. On the original recipe that I'm following, or at least this original copycat recipe, they add this to the chili as it's kind of starting to boil. I'm adding them to the meat now. I wanna get this chili caramelized and I want it to basically dissolve into nothing. And I think it's going to help with that richer color. So just add this to the mix here. Again, this is two tablespoons of finely, finely minced carrots. Stir this in. So again, I wanna get this meat broken down to just little crumbs. All right, and this is what I'm looking for. You can see the uh, carrots are cooking down really nicely. The meat is in little chunks, little crumbs. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off the heat and drain off all this grease. We're going to use this to make a roux. All right, cast iron skillets heated up. I'm going to add that grease and we ended up with about a half a cup. Now something different that I'm adding to this recipe is one half stick of butter. Get that melted in. Now something that's going to make my friends in Louisiana roll over. The original copycat recipe uses flour, of course, for the roux. I think for this recipe, it'll help with the consistency and also the roots of this at Southern California. I'm using masa, so it's like a corn flour, the same flour you would use to make tortillas. And I think it'll help with that consistency that this chili has. So I'm just going to add this flour and just keep it stirring. I'm gonna keep adding flour until there's the amount that I'm looking for. See it's got this kind of like brown butter kind of a thing going on. All right, I've been stirring this a good 15, 20 minutes, and this is what I'm looking for. Just continually stirring. I didn't allow it to sit too long, burn on the bottom. It's got an amazing, amazing smell. It has a kind of a corn smell. It smells really good. So what I'm going to do now is add one and a third cups of beef broth. Get this whisked in really well. See how it's sucking up all that liquid? All right, flame off. Get this off the heat. We'll be using that very shortly. Okay, I've transferred the meat into this large kind of a stock pot. The heat going. I'm going to add four cups of water. 
Now I'm going to get that roux mixture into the pot. Get this whisked in here. So into the mix, one teaspoon paprika, one tablespoon white vinegar, two teaspoons dehydrated minced onion, one teaspoon granulated sugar, four teaspoons chili powder, one quarter teaspoon garlic powder, two teaspoons kosher salt. Just get this whisked up here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is bring this up to a boil. Once it's boiling, I'm going to simmer it a good 30 minutes or so, basically until it gets the consistency I want. And the consistency of this chili for these burgers is pretty darn thick. See you in a bit. We've been simmering this a good 30 minutes or so. As you can see, it's definitely thickening up. It needs to be thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the heat now allow it to cool just a bit. As it does, it's going to thicken, it's going to tighten up, get that kind of pasty consistency that Tommy's chili has. I'll meet you guys outside at the grill. We'll cook up a Tommy's double cheese chili burger. See you outside. All right, we're ready to make this Tommy's double cheese chili burger. Before we do, I just wanna talk really quick about the chili I made. Again, I was using an existing copycat recipe that I made some tweaks to. I used masa instead of all-purpose flour. I think I came pretty darn close to the consistency and flavor. However, I think if I were to do this again, I would go 50-50, so half all-purpose, half masa. I'll make the changes down in the uh, recipe down below. The other thing I ended up doing was adding a little bit more salt as I tasted it. It just seemed a little bit too bland. Let's get the cooking. First thing we're gonna do is toast our buns, and these are just regular old White bread, buns, no sesame seeds. All right, good toast here. Now we'll go ahead and grill those patties. Pretty darn thin patties, and basically I used the same exact technique as I did with the Whataburger when forming these patties. Add some salt. Now this is going to be a very quick cook. While these guys are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and put a mustard mixture on the top bun. They cut their mustard with pickle juice. And looking at the mustard, tasting it, I think it's Coleman's mustard. It has that kind of fluorescent look and that sharp flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some mustard on. Again, this is the top bun. They build their burgers upside down, like a lot of other fast food places do. Give these guys a flip. Beautiful crust. Add that American cheese, of course. In a few seconds we're going to be done here, so let's start building the condiments now. Throw down a tomato. The pickles. They're pretty generous with the pickles. Some chopped onions. Right now we'll take that patty, put it on top of the other patty. Some of that chili. You can see how thick this chili is. And I'm building this to look more like the burger that they have on their advertisement than the one they actually give you. The one they actually give you looks like, like it exploded basically. A little bit more. Still a lot of chili. And that bottom bun. Now just like Whataburger, this is an upside down burger. They build it on the paper that they wrap it up in. So 
I'm going to attempt to flip this guy right side up. We'll see what happens here. Could be ugly. Not that bad, not that bad. It looks a lot like the burger I ate just again a couple days ago. Let's give it a try here. <laughs> that is a big, messy, messy burger. I'm telling you, I got pretty darn close. The chili tastes very much like Tommy's. And like I said, just a couple days ago when I was gearing up for making this video, I went there. It's got the same, that chili's got the same consistency. That masa was a good call, actually. I still think a 50-50 maybe would get a little bit closer. But just everything that's going on here, you know, the, those minced up onions in the mix, just goes very well with chili. Those crisp pickles, that tanginess of the pickles. It's disintegrating in my hand. Definitely this is a, <laughs> you need a burger diaper for this. Mm. All right, carefully put that down. Cutting board is a disaster now. I was, I'm very pleased with this recreation here. Same color, that chili has the same color, the same, again, the same texture. Anyway, guys, let's get to the beer spotlight. So what I'm drinking today, it's a Ballast Point California Kolsch. And for those of you who follow or enjoy Ballast Point, this is what they used to call yellowtail. Um, it's very, very similar to a Pilsner. It's, it's not as harsh as an IPA, but it's still pretty bold. The thing I really like about this is it's got a crispiness, kind of a little hints of kind of fruity flavors, but it's very refreshing. And that's what I like about it. It's not, it doesn't just weigh you down. Like this big ass burger is going to weigh me down. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>